So this is portion of the panel, which is obviously going to be abbreviated. We want to really get right to it. Is about business and education. So I have a young man here who was. Uh, I, I noticed you're watching intently as we talk about uh, some of the kids in the hood and trying to develop businesses and startups and. Uh, where do you think stand with you? What, what was the change for you that had you growing up saying, I can be somebody, I can have my dream, and I can still serve Christ in my business? All right, thank you, thank you. So I just want to thank Pastor Pat Chen for having me up here. Um, about two, three years ago, I would have never thought I'd be doing this, but um, God is good. Um, so what, what shifted my thinking of, uh, of business was, I graduated from college, I went to South Dakota State University, graduated, got a finance degree, moved back out to Pittsburgh with my parents, and then I seen among our church unemployment. And I was unemployed at the time, I had a resume, and I'm going to shop it around, I had a couple job offers, but I had to switch my thinking from finding a job to creating jobs. I mean, I'm 27 years old right now, I was 22 when I graduated, and I, I wanted to be that go-to guy at my church that people can find work at. Um, it, nothing, nothing makes me feel better when I can take a couple kids from my church and say, hey, let's go work through the night. I got, I got a project for us to finish. I'll pay you. Here's the money at the end of the day. Let's go, let's go to work. Um, and then another thing is ownership. Um, so much of this has been perpetuated that find a job, get a good job, retire, get the Corvette. I, I can't stand that thinking. I want the Corvette now. <laughs> meaning that, meaning that, I sh I'm a man, right? I'm a man. I don't want to have a boss. Who in here likes, or who in here wants to have a boss for the rest of their life? He's like, no hands go. Exactly, exactly. So, what my, my thinking is, is why can't I be my own boss, go out to the marketplace, provide a good or a service, charge somebody for it, bring it back home to my wife and kids? Why, why can't I be that type of person that does that? Um, it, it takes a little bit of work. It takes some capital. It takes a lot of prayer, a lot of dedication. It takes support. San Jose, the East Bay area, they can do that. And with, a, with dedication, persistence, we can do that as well. That's awesome. I said, here's living proof of the young man. Uh, let me ask you, how did you get to this? Did you, what, what was it like growing up and what made you see that no matter what the streets or what people said, you could still overcome that? I, uh, from Pittsburgh, California, so similar to Oakland, you know, you got your, your crime, you got your drugs and all of that, but there was a point in my life that when my friends started to do the drugs and the alcohol, I said I never wanted to do that, so I'm 27 years sober, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've never done a drug, never drank alcohol, anything like that. But it takes, it takes, um, it, it, it takes, because I, I, my, my father is a pastor of Faith Worship Center Ministries in Pittsburgh, um, but it takes a, a sense of you showing your kid that he can do right. That, that he can be successful by doing right. I mean, a lot of us parents who preach to our kids, pull your pants up, who watch all that TV, uh, you know, be nice to people, but they hear you all day on the phone gossiping to your friend. You know, they see you watching four or five hours of TV a day. Like, come on, now we can't watch that much TV and be successful in life. They, sh they, they see you reading all these magazines and going to all these gossip blogs, and then they don't see you make as much money as that, that person on MTV or BET, and they have that, that, that I guess, uh, secular lifestyle. So it's hard to preach somebody, to preach to a kid, because kids are, <sighs> more things are caught than taught to kids. The kids catch you doing stuff. You can teach them all you want, but if they see you doing something contrary to what you're teaching them, they're, they're, they're not gonna hear you. Um, so in, in, my, in my family, like I've never heard my dad raise his voice on my mom, ever. Ever, I never heard them. Ar I mean, you hear them bicker. I mean, they're married, but you don't hear them argue at all. So that's what I want to do when I get a wife one day. I don't want to be the guy who's around his kids arguing, fussing, and fighting, throwing uh, knives at each other. And then I see the the he, he put a three point three point two million dollar uh, building project together and finished it. It's not paid off yet, but it, 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 us faith people, we know it's paid off, right? Oh. Um, and I see him put that together and what it took for all the people leaving the church and the people
people coming back to the church and people being wavering and saying, oh, he ain't going to do it, he ain't going to do it. And he did it. And that lets me know that and he puts his pants on the same way I do. These guys work at the steel mill, you know, be there for 40 years, hate my boss every day, you know, drink a beer and sit down and watch the game every Saturday with my boys and then get a Corvette. That's, I mean, that's not success to me. Come on, get it up. Is your dad here? Dad, can you stand up? Somehow I knew he would be your dad. <laughs> like father, like son. But it goes back to what I was saying before. The greatness of a nation begins in the homes of its people. Uh, Dean Nelson is from my neck of the woods, Washington, D.C. And he works with uh, Wellington Boone Ministries as well as the Frederick Douglass Foundation. And, and, and Dean, you, you're, you're seeing what's happening in business and education from a, from a perspective of also saying, yeah, there's trouble out there, but God's going to still the waters. Yes, thank you. Uh, it's great to be part of this panel. I want to expand the conversation just a little bit, still dealing a little bit with the issue of, uh, of economics and, and business. It's great being able to sit next to young Isn't entrepreneurs. It? Um, it, the, the, it takes all types uh, within the body of Christ uh, and in God's kingdom to, to expand it. Um, I want to begin with a quote uh, from Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, I work in, in, in the D.C. area. Uh, I serve a lot of different uh, organizations, uh, particularly within the, the political arena. Uh, but in this area of education and uh, specifically um, kind of marketplace and business, I want to start first with this statement from MLK. He said that the church uh, is not the master nor the servant of the state, but rather it is the conscience of the state. And if the church loses its prophetic zeal, it becomes an irrelevant social club without moral or spiritual authority. That has stuck with me because the reality is, is that in many places the church seems to be that social club with no moral or spiritual authority. Two weeks ago, I was in Richmond, Virginia, uh, hosting an event that was called Liberty and Justice for All, with a question mark. Uh, we, the Frederick Douglass Foundation, for which I serve as the chairman, we have this slogan. We say, righteousness and justice, liberty and virtue. Because within our culture, it's not just righteousness, uh, which sometimes is radical at its heart to the gospel. Because Jesus eschewed Christian celebrity. He, uh, when the crowd got too big, he went away. So I want to, uh, in, 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 you know, this is, it's a complex issue that you can't resolve in two minutes, but the, I believe part of the way that we utilize the media to get uh, in that direction, to move in that direction, is to, uh, uh, to have mentorships, uh, to have internships, for example, um, I'm working with InterVarsity right now. A group called Vokari is trying to help uh, InterVarsity inter uh, get interns placed in uh, different places around the Bay Area. Uh, can I? Uh, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. And so, so hopefully, through this short uh, uh, panel, you've seen that there is help. You can contact Dean. You can contact David. And because you're you're the baby up here, I'm going to give you the final <laughs> word. Um, because I think, first of all, you're, the, you're America's next generation, and I'm glad that is entrusted to you. I really am, I mean that. So can you close this up? Um, who, everybody that was here last night, you guys seen what happened. There's plenty of us young adults out here, and um, it just makes me feel at ease that I get to go to battle with those young generations, with guys like Brandon Scott, Jonathan Overall, um, and those girls that were praying up here, like, that's, like, come on, that's a dream team, right? I, it, it, it makes me feel good that, that we are going into Oakland, Pittsburgh, Richmond, uh, Vallejo, Silicon Valley, and we can grow those companies, build those companies, start those startups, and change the world um, through Christ.
out there. So if you have questions, we're out there where we can entertain questions beyond just today. Thank you. We do have lots of tables, lots of displays out there. Please go over and see them, David. Pastors, if there's any pastors here, I encourage you. I've been to David's table at KFAC. We encourage you to go there as well. Lots of resources for pastors. Let's give a hand for our moderator, Kelly Wright.